Hey Rock Gun Beer viewers, it's brew day time. Uh, in fact, I already have the brew day started. Uh, I tried to take some little time lapse y thing, but my camera fell down, so I don't know if I'll, maybe I'll put in some mashing in footage here. If not, just imagine me pouring grain into water. Are you, are you done imagining it? Because I don't know if the video came in there. Anyway, doesn't matter. Take a look. Let's flip you down here. I don't know if you can see through the little, through my hole here. Can you see through my hole? Yeah. We're brewing. I'm brewing in the bank. Brewing in the, that's what I'm, that's how I roll it. Uh, I'm doing the, I'm doing a, a, a 10, 10, 10 liter batch. So kind of, I don't, I don't dirty the malt pipe for anything less than 20 whole liters, you guys. So I'm just brewing in the bag today. What am I brewing? I'm going to give you a little hint here. Can you read those? Galaxy, El Dorado. Uh, I've been meaning to uh, the man, the man Nate from Under the Table Brewing. He sent me, I, I asked him for the Dropkick Nate recipe. Oh, geez, must have been before, must have been before summer. And um, uh, he was kind enough to send me that. And I have put aside a dozen different set where, like weekends where I'm, I'm gonna brew Dropkick Nate. That's what I'm gonna do. Got the hops, I'm gonna do it. And then I, I didn't do it because there's stuff got in the way or I was obsessing over one of the one of the malts that I couldn't get here, one of the one of the secret ingredients in the dropkick nate is this American uh, malt. I'm not going to give the recipe; that's not my place. Um, ask him for it; he's not. Uh, he, he'll give it to you, I guess. Um, yeah. So the one of the one of the secret ingredients is an American uh, malt that I can't get my hands on. So I was gonna it's gonna just make a euro version of it, the urine, euro, euro, urine, the euronate. Um, but uh, I actually used uh, the ingredient in another beer, and now I don't have it anymore. So I thought, ah, God damn it, I really want to brew, and I, I really just want a nice pale ale. I want to brew up the DKN. So what do I got? And then I, I looked in what I, I, I have barely nothing in for malt, and uh, I saw two things, and I was like, yeah, that's the one right there. Um, so I have replaced, uh, I've got the, uh, the main grist is going to be, um, crisp extra pale Maris Otter, which I've never used before, but it's, looks really nice. And then I am the other major, uh, component in the grist I am replacing with wheat. So we're calling this the drop wheat Nate. Yeah. Drop wheat Nate. I was, I was pretty proud of myself when I came up with that. It was really difficult to, uh, to replace kick with wheat. Um, anyway, so this is going to be kind of a hazy beer because I'm I'm loving I love the haze. Uh, I don't know if you could tell from my um, SJ4 entry, and uh, yes, yeah, me and Lou we love the haze. Uh, so I am making kind of the northeast uh, IPA hazy as as fuck um, version of Dropkick Nate with with uh, a large portion of the grist being wheat, so drop wheat Nate, keeping the hop schedule, keeping the proportions, keeping the generally keeping the um, the ABV and everything, but just uh, yeah. So let's. Uh, I had some footage of. The, I tried to take some fancy time lapse footage of me um, doughing in, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that's. I don't know if that made it or not. You can. Uh, you can imagine it as uh, as me just uh, pouring grain into water. If you if I don't end up getting it in here, but I will be back a little later. Uh, I'm gonna finish out this mash and I'm gonna go find myself a beer. guys mash is over check out that protein on top of this thing uh, we're heading up to boil oh, it says 88 uh, one nice thing about doing small batches or half batches on the grain father is that 
this thing, when it's not totally full, will bring beer up to a boil in like no time. Uh, it's actually the 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 brew in a bag batches I do on the Grandfather are some of the quickest brew days I've ever had. But all right, we're coming up to the boil. I wanted to mention um, <laughs> I put the Grandfather on wheels. Check that out. Ooh, ooh, we're making some waves over here. Yeah, I put it on. I went to the hardware store and I bought this like. Um, furniture moving dolly and uh it's because so this is where i'm brewing here in the bathroom sorry for the laundry um and i used to have the grandfather here where the counter flow is um and then i would fill it from the um we have like a little hose thing that comes off the uh the shower in there that's where i would fill it from we have really clean water in Denmark. We don't chlorinate it or anything. So, um, yeah. So I would uh, I'd fill it straight from the um, yeah from the shower, and then of course it would sit there because it's full, right? And it weighs like a zillion tons. Uh, and then as I'm like cleaning things or as I'm like finishing stuff up and cleaning out the fermenter and you know doing other stuff, I would have to be like, uh climbing over it, climbing over this boiling cauldron. So, uh, yeah, that would be why it's on wheels now. Now I can just kind of give it a, here, give it a, give it a good kick out of the way, move it back over here towards the door so that I can uh, access all of this um, during the during the actual brew day. And then I'll, I'll give it a swift kick back when it's time to uh, to chill because I run the I run the water off into the shower, or you you know I use the shower on my my super ghetto. Uh, I got this uh, ghetto rigged here to uh, to hook up to the. Uh, hey, this is my shower, everybody. I'm sure you've sure you've always wanted to see that. Anyway, all right, I will be back when the the boil are already at ninety two degrees. So boil should be any time, and uh, I'll be back then. Look at that. That is crazy looking. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's telling me that it's boiling. You, come on. Let's, yeah. It's, uh, you wouldn't know. I mean, now, now I'm starting to see that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh. That's awesome. So, I know a lot of people scoop this or stir or something like that. But I usually, uh, I usually just let the, um, I usually just let it get sucked down, let the boil kind of, um, uh, kind of bring it back down because the, the grandfather is really good at, um, at, uh, what do you want to say? Filtering, filtering out the, um, the junk, the proteins. So it's fine. It's fine if it all just flops down there. It's less, less hassle. So, we got a rolling boil going. Very rolling boil. Another thing about the grandfather is that it rolls, it rolls hard on these small batches. So, here's the first Eldorado shot going in. And I'm gonna start the timer. Oh, I meant to use a hop bag, damn it. All right, hop stand is over. We are slowly running off through the counter flow into my little brew bucket here. Got the, uh, we're making it a, we're making it a New England because I, I thought I had US05 in the fridge, but I only have US04. So we're really going for that whole New England haze thing. We're gonna use a British yeast on it. But uh, yeah, um, everything went everything went well. Uh, my first decan in the books, or dropkick wheat, as I'm gonna call it. Uh, yeah, just gonna finish running that off, pitch the yeast, and um, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. There's actually a pretty smooth brew day. No real, uh, no real hiccups at all. Now I've probably jinxed myself. All right.
See you guys, yeah, see you guys when I update on this. Later.